I can't see your screen anymore, Maggie. No, it, no one can see it, evidently. I don't know why. No. There. Did it there, come back on? It did. Okay, good. Okay, so here's the... That should be the main page. Yep. Yeah, there's the main page. And you'll notice across the middle of the screen where they've got the tabs there, there's some new ones at the end, Gen Demographics 1, Demographics 2, and Gen Lex. And um, so if Maggie's just going to kind of click. So when you enter somebody new into Montana Works, you're going to have to go into these screens and enter some information. On the details tab, there's the education status at participation. Uh, the UC eligible status, which is the unemployment insurance. And you can click long-term unemployed. You could put a layoff date in here if it's applicable. You still have to put the, if you're doing dislocated worker, you still have to put the dislocated worker layoff date on the regular place where it is in Montana Works. But. And then notification, this is, um, Maggie, in WIOA, we don't use this screen so much, so can you talk about this? Sure, this is just letting, um, this is how somebody says that they want to get notified by email, by text. Um, if they want to get text, they have their cell number in here with the carrier, like Verizon or whatever. Um, this email field is the same email as up here. Um, not sure why it's in both places, but just because of the, the email uh, notification, I'm assuming. And type down here, from what I understand, it that goes with um, things like Twitter, uh, Facebook, so those things, uh, if they had typed that in when they register, that those things would be here. And if they had their um, own website, then they would put that in there. So that's what all those are. Great. And then the resume tab, I think this is mostly a job service function. Yes, yeah, so these, all these four, interest, experience, education, are all the same as they've been. Okay. And here's where it gets different under the Demographics 1. Um, it asks you their race, of course, there's all Rick, that. Rick, you have a call on line one, Rick? Rick has a call on line one. <laughs> um, there's a place for... All the, the race there, you just pick them. Um, offender, there's the offender box right below the race. Um, you've got ethnicity, Hispanic, non-Hispanic, not undeclared. Um, the payment information, that's probably the same for that job service. Um, just a minute, let me see if I can mute him. Okay. Um, and then the disability, this is different now. The disability question, not only does it ask if you have a disability or not, um, um, WIOA has us giving the people option to declare what their disability is or tell us. So you can check as many as the person has um, if they declare that. So that's one thing that's different. And they're just all clickable. And they don't they do not have to answer those questions just like before. So it would be not answered as the option. And um, the Hispanic non Hispanic has the undeclared also now. Okay. Demographics two, there's where you put the some barriers if they're homeless, they're underemployed, low income, English language learner. So WIOA has us tracking um, these barriers is, uh, is why we're putting them in here. And then GenLex, I don't know. That's how it's doing a search on whatever occupations. So you can see what ONET they're being matched with. And you can, I don't think everybody's going to have access to this. Okay. No, oh, I, I don't think this will show up on most people's screen. Okay. One thing I forgot to mention when we when Maggie was putting in the new seeker um, on the smiley face screen, um, gender 
can be not specified now. So the person does not have to declare whether they're male or female. So right there. So that's one of the options. I wonder what you type in there for it if the person doesn't declare. Well, they don't, yeah, they don't have it as a choice on the list of values, so maybe we got to let them know that. Yeah, we'll find that out what, if the person doesn't want to declare a gender, what, um, what you need to type in there because it's not a <clears throat> drop down. So, okay, so that's um, the new way of entering a seeker into the system. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? I think you all should be able to talk. No questions here. Okay. I wonder if we can increase the resolution. Increase the resolution? Yeah. Boy, I don't know if we can do that or not. I don't know if I'm smart enough to do that. <laughs> I click outside of the screen box in the gray area. Is it better on jobs.mt.gov website? Does that look better? Let's see if I can increase the What I need is just to have it be a bigger picture on your. Uh, well, you can in, you can increase the magnification on your screen. That might help. Yeah, but yours is just the M works is only about one half of your screen, which if I do mine, it's just a big blur. Huh. Okay. okay. Let me see what I can do. Oh. Hmm. Low resolution and high resolution, and all I need is for you to just go to a lower resolution on yours, and it will make the screen a little bigger. I on see what's happening. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yep, I know exactly what you're saying. And it won't show all of the pretty sunset behind you. Thank you. Is that better? I don't know, yeah. Back to a Montana work screen. Is that better for everybody? Great. I think that was a yes. I'm not sure. I'm okay. not seeing any change at all. I can send you screenshots of this, whoever this is that I'm talking to. So it's Paula. Oh, hey Paula. Yeah, I will. I'll do that. Because I can't read any of the words at all. Okay, so um, Suzanne, you want me to go ahead with this? Sure, go right ahead. Okay. So um, basically, the first change, and and this is the this we're still on the test side of jobs.mt.gov, so you're not going to see this until Friday. The the main change on this page is you now have a provider sign up, which you don't have to worry about. That's just for um, entities that want to become training providers with the state. 
but just so you know that it's there and you don't freak out when you see it, um, you're not going to have to worry about it uh, for most people. So we're going to go, if you're going to sign somebody up, you'd go to Seeker Sign Up just to save time. I already created somebody. Um, so let me... Okay, so most of this is going to look, basic information page is the same. Uh, when you go in each time, you're going to have to put um, your email in. If you notice, and this is going back to a, a situation that a lot of people have that don't, you know, this requires an email, and a lot of people don't have an email. If you put in an email address, as long as it's in an email format, this is the one I picked, al at aaa.org. Um, you can, as long as it looks like it's in email format, and this is for people that truly, truly don't have email and don't have access. If they have a smartphone, they've got an email address. Um, so just so that people don't get stuck on this. But anyway, this page looks the same as before. So does this one, and it will give you that second reminder that you should have a resume uploaded. This it looks the same. So now this is where it starts to be different. This is on that additional information tab. Um, are you a veteran or transitional service member? If you say yes, it will ask these same questions that have been on there, dates of service, um, what the veteran status is. If you say no, it doesn't come up. This is a little different. Are you an eligible spouse of a veteran? we wanted to get some definitions on there, so that has been put on there. If they say yes, the actual choices will appear, and this wording where it just repeats what it says above um, will change to you know something like, please select one of the following, whichever is the most appropriate. So they will check you know one of these radio buttons. So that will only appear if they say yes but they'll know to say yes by reading the definition that fits their situation. So are you eligible, legally eligible to work in the United States? That's yes or no. That doesn't change. Here's where um, we're starting to track more closely, more detailed information about um, a seeker's employment status. So are you employed? And the definitions of being employed are here. Uh, receiving notice of separation that, that goes through that. And then it also mentions uh, or describes what it means to not be in the labor force. So that was a big question. You know, I don't know what the difference between no and not in labor force is. So that's, that's there. So if you select, are you employed? Yes, that answer or that question is answered and then you would go on. If you, if the person answers yes but receive layoff notice, then the question pops up, when will you be laid off? And then you put a date in there. If the person answers no, then these questions pop up. What was your last date of employment? How many months were you employed with the previous employer? And what was your last job title? So we owe people will notice that that's all information that you're going to want. So this will be really helpful for that. And then if somebody reads the definitions and they realize they're not in the labor force, and they click that, then there are no additional questions for that. These are pretty much all the same. Um, so we'll just say not attending high school. This may, this may change a little bit in the next couple weeks to maybe be a little more clear about what OO is, maybe kindergarten, um, you know, 13 is one first year of college, 14 is second year of college, so on and so forth. Degree obtained, um, I think we're also talking about changing the order of these so they're in a little more um, logical order so that you have attained high school before bachelor's degree. So that may change, but the question and all of the answers will remain the same. And here's where Suzanne was talking about on gender that uh, male, female, or prefer not to disclose. It's a required question. They have to answer it, but they, there are three 
options. Same with Spanish, Hispanic, Latino. Required, yes, no, prefer not to disclose. And if you notice, as they answer these questions, it goes from red to black. So if a, if a question is red, it means they haven't answered it. Uh, race, they can choose, they don't have to choose. Um, they can choose to put it down, but they don't have to. Um, and here's, here's a big change here. Do you have a disability? And again, this is all self-identified, and this is not something that they have to disclose. So they can just say, prefer not to disclose, and the question is answered. Same with no. If they say yes, then they can, they don't have to, they can then mark which ones apply to them. But again, this is totally voluntary. Are you homeless or a runaway? There's no difference in the answers as far as anything that comes up. And t somebody tell me if I'm going too fast or if you have any questions, let me know. Um, are you low income? Record yes if any of the following are true. So based on some requests, put in definition of what is low income. And this was just taken from the regs, so it can be a little confusing, so they may have some questions as to whether they fit into this, uh, but at least there's a definition for staff to work with. So um, yes or no does not change any of the, there are no additional questions based on that. Are you a single parent? Again, required, but yes, no, prefer not to disclose. Displaced homemaker is important for WIOA. Um, and a lot of people don't know what displaced homemaker is. They don't even know they are one, potentially. So again, a definition here. No additional questions based on the answer. English, your second language. Uh, and here's different wording here. Um, do you have educational barriers? And I'm trying to remember what, how it's worded now. I'm like a... Um, low skills or something, I forget what it is, but anyway, uh, the question has been changed to do you have educational barriers, and it talks about what that would look like. So again, this is all self-identification. Um, we know in WIOA that you're going to give somebody the TABE test and that will identify some um, educational barriers there, but again, no additional questions, just yes or no. Uh, cultural barriers is another question. Um, yes, no, prefer not to disclose. And then the last one is um, the MSFW. If they mark migrant seasonal farm worker, this drop down box pops up and they have to answer those. Seasonal farm worker is the same, but if they answer dependent or no, that's just the answer. There are no additional questions. And then save and continue. Any questions on this, far, uh, this part so far? I guess not. That's good. So one thing I did want to mention um, is, as you can see, there's a lot of information. When you compare this to the, seeker, the new Seeker screen in MWorks, uh, there's a lot more information that um, somebody would be putting in to register themselves. Um, so we are strongly, strongly encouraging people to have people register themselves or if they don't have the skills, uh, either computer skills or other skills to do this themselves, that you take the opportunity to sit down with them and you get them on the computer so these questions can be answered. We really don't want, we want the rare exception uh, to be that there is uh, job service staff actually entering somebody in on that seeker screen on MWorks. Really, we should be having those mini um, intake conversations with people as we're sitting with them in the resource room. That's really kind of part of that larger vision that Scott's been talking about. Um, so we just encourage everybody to definitely do that. We're going to be putting together for uh, non-state providers, I mean, for state providers for job service staff, um, next week we're going to be doing a couple of webinars talking about that process. We're not going to be redoing um, paper registration forms to match this because we're encouraging people to sit down 
with folks, get them registered online when they come in and not uh, be having them fill out a paper. So um, we'll be talking more about that. I'll send out more information. And we just really want to start to have a conversation about what this is going to look like, uh, the challenges that you guys think it might create, and how we can resolve those challenges. So more on that later. I think that's it, Suzanne. That's all I've got. OK. I see some questions now, Maggie. Um, all right. So somebody back. was wondering, are we not inputting an email at time of registration now? Um, at time of registration, there is there is that place where you have to put the email in. Yes. Okay. Right now we are. Oh, so you didn't see it on my you didn't see it on my screen because I had already registered that person. Those screens have not changed from what we usually do. Okay. And somebody asked, so it doesn't have to be a valid email address? Do everything you can to make sure it is one. I mean, again, some people come in and say, I don't have an email address, and yet they have a smartphone, and they're getting Gmail on there, so they probably have one. But if they truly don't, I know we have a lot of people in the Bitterroot who don't have access, don't know how to use email. You don't want to get stuck on that. Just put in something that looks like an email address. Okay. And just let them know, you know, they're not going to be notified through email, obviously, but that will, that's sort of the workaround. And do you know, Maggie, why we're asking people to validate their email address every time they log in? I don't know the answer to that, and I think it's under discussion. Okay. So, um, but I don't know if it's going to change anytime soon. It is kind of a pain, but just one click. Okay. And somebody made a comment, is, it, is all of this information just for WIOA? Seems like there's a lot of very personal and demographic information that I find many seekers of veterans don't like government agencies having on them. And that's why a lot of them, a lot of those um, fields are, um, they don't have to answer if they choose not to. A lot of prefer not to disclose. Yep. Yeah. Um, another thing about this information is that if somebody chooses to disclose, say, disability information, um, and it's something that can help you refer that person to get them other resources that might be helpful, that's certainly something that can be helpful, it can help a conversation. So you can look at it that way, that you may be finding out other options for the person with whatever information they choose to give. And so somebody's asking, back to the email, is the email just on the notification screen now? Um, on the notification screen. I don't know what the notification screen is. Help me with that. Okay. Maybe she'll type that in. Okay. What the notification screen. And some couple people are asking, um, Will the WIOA application, oh, sorry, let's go back to the email, notification tab, the email. Oh, notification tab on, on MWorks. Let's see. Yes, it will be there, right there. But it's also displayed up above on the seeker info. Yes, it's still on the, just the general with the address and the phone number. It's still there, too. Okay. And somebody's asking if the WIOA application will be updated to match the seeker entry screens. And yes, that will be doing that. Um, Candy, our new person, is going to is so excited to get to do that. So she's, she's working on those. Um, and how soon in the application... Um, how soon in the application process do you want an applicant to sign up with MT.gov? And I would say right away, um, as soon as they come in to your office, I would say have them um, sign up with MT.gov or jobs.mt.gov because that's just going to help. Um, Somebody's asking, um, if the people answer questions, 
and it appears they're eligible for WIOA, will it give us a heads up in our scheduler like it does with a new veteran? I don't believe so. Okay. But if you go back um, to MWorks, let's just say somebody hit the yes to displaced homemaker. Um, it will go into the general tab um, and displaced homemaker will be checked. So if you are working with somebody and you go into their, their seeker profile and you see displaced homemakers checked, that means they checked that when they registered and you can then talk to them about WIOA. Okay, and I don't see any more questions, Maggie. Awesome. Do you mind just um, scrolling to the um, application screen for WIOA and just we can just show them the new... Um, sure. The new question where it's at about exhausting. Yeah, I've, already, I've already forgotten where it is. See? It doesn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, is it on the... It's um, on the eligibility tab, so you oh, might have to get to that. I need to have a real person, so let me put Padrina in. Okay. Hold on. Good old Padrina, what would we do without her? Okay, there's the eligibility tab. So it's right... Um, where it says SNAP in the last six months receiving TANF, exhausting TANF is right there, that's the question. And that just means are you um, getting close to exhausting TANF? That's a yes or no answer. Okay, and so somebody's asking, um, if we find the application pro in the application process that some of the information conflicts with the self-entry information, can we correct it? Is that, I, I would say that's for you, Suzanne? Yeah, I, I know. I think they should correct it <laughs> if they can. Yeah, um, I think if you've got the correct, yeah, more accurate is better. Right. So, for example, their employment status might change as they come mm -hmm. through, you know, when they use the system. So, um, yes, if, I think if you find that, um, or their... Where is it? Details. There we go. So if you were working with that person and now they were they're laid off like, since yeah. the last time, yeah, you can change that. Yep, I would update that. And then, so anything you should be able to update to reflect the most recent. What's considered long-term and unemployed now, Suzanne? Um, I think it's 28 weeks, but I would have to look that up for sure. And somebody's asking, are seekers that are already registered going to get these to be updated when they log in? And That's I believe a great the question. answer is yes. <laughs> yes, I believe so too. I don't know for sure, but I would think so. Yeah. But I'll, I'll check and then send out something. So That's a great question. It seems like when we were playing with this, if you were already a, a person in there, it's going to ask you those new questions okay. when they log in again. Okay, so I don't see any other questions. Um, for the WIOA case managers, um, we're probably going to have some, you know, a new application. We'll probably have some more conversation about this. Um, um, just about, you know, like the question was, should we update the information if it's incorrect? And, and we'll, we'll have some more conversations with everybody around that just so that everybody's on the same page. Um, but we just wanted to get you the screens to look at and um, be looking forward to them on Friday. <laughs> okay, somebody else is asking, can the federal wording be changed so it makes sense to someone with a fifth grade reading level? <laughs> I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I, I think we can work on that. <laughs> and I know who I'm going to ask, too. <laughs> 
Yep. Yeah, it's kind of bad when staff have to get out a dictionary to figure out what it means yeah. too, so. Need a law degree. Okay, and somebody said Maggie is awesome. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> was that Shelly? It was. <laughs> yeah, I paid her to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. Well, um, that concludes our presentation today. Um, go ahead and email myself or Maggie if you have any questions about anything that you've seen or as it comes up. Let us know if it's not working. And we'll be doing this again tomorrow at noon, right? Right. Same, same thing. So if you want to hear it again, <laughs> tune in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks and have a great uh, afternoon. Thanks, Suzanne.